In machine learning, you're training a machine to perform repetitive tasks for you. And if you have ever annotated or segmented your images in a manual way by painting the pixels, then you'll definitely appreciate a machine's help in automating this task. This process of segmenting every pixel in an image is referred to as semantic segmentation by the deep learning community. And there are many deep learning uh, based algorithms that are designed for semantic segmentation. But the one that stands out is UNET. And this is especially uh, effective at segmenting biological images. And whether it is UNET or any other deep learning approach, the core concept is you provide a pair of image and corresponding ground truth. And the ground truth is provided as a fully segmented image to the model. So when we say a fully segmented image, that is again referred to as densely labeled images by the community, by that every pixel must belong to a specific class, meaning you're again doing a manual segmentation. This works great, but this is very laborious. And sometimes it doesn't make sense because you may be labeling similar looking regions over and over and over, whereas you're better off spending the same amount of time in labeling multiple images so that you can provide a more generalized uh, set of images for the training algorithm. So what if we can actually perform partial labeling? Only label the regions that are relevant and that add information to the training process. But most of these uh, uh, standard algorithms that are available outside, you know, uh, in the public domain, they're not designed to handle partial annotations, but our team at uh, Appear, we came out with a nice innovative way of handling these partial annotations for deep learning purposes. So you can just go ahead and focus on labeling these important regions in your images. So. In the next few minutes, let me just walk you through the process of just uh, at a high level, show you the process of annotating these images. But more importantly, I'd like to shed some light into my own personal experiences by working on two different types of data sets. One, a binary data set where we only have mitochondria and, the, and a very busy background. And another, a multi-class example where I have multiple different classes like the one that you see on the screen here. And initially, I should say I definitely failed at getting good results and I'll talk about why I failed and how I fixed it very quickly by just changing my labeling strategy. So let me jump into Appear so I can show you what I'm talking about. And for those of you who are not aware, Appear is an image analysis platform in the cloud that is free for academics. And it is very intuitive, so I'm not going to focus a lot on uh, explaining various uh, various functionalities and how to use it, but rather I'll focus a bit more on my experiences like I mentioned earlier, so you learn a bit more about uh, labeling strategies when it comes to partial annotations or partial labeling. So let me start by showing you the binary segmentation example where I have mitochondria against a busy background. So for that, let's go to annotate. And this is where you can create a new data set and you can add your own data and the data can be TIFF stacks or it can be multiple TIFF files or a CZI file and so on. So once you add that, you get to annotate them. So here I uploaded the data and I click annotate. This opens up a web viewer where you can go ahead and manually label your uh, your mitochondria in this example. So here is my data set. And when I say data set, I'm not talking about thousands of images that you typically hear about when it comes to deep learning. In this case, I only have 12 images. And on the whole, I believe I have 152 individual mitochondria objects that I labeled. So on the left hand side, background class is already defined. It's predefined for you. And the only thing I added was mitochondria class. And I used the pen tools right here. I selected mitochondria, use the pen tools to go ahead and brush these. So when I am done with that, so I have my mitochondria objects labeled and I selected background. I mean, just to show you, I selected background. Let's go ahead and select background one more time. So you get to see exactly how this can be done. And I select background and I select my brush tool and draw around these mitochondria. And why am I doing this around mitochondria? Because it's very important for you to define the boundary between your objects and the background to make sure the boundary pixels are correctly segmented because oftentimes these are the tough ones. So I segmented, I, I uh, defined a uh, 
mitochondria and also the background and I went ahead and trained a model and let's go ahead and look at the results after the training. So here it looks great on the first image. In fact, you can see some misclassifications right there. And if I go to the second image, the results are not good. I mean, mitochondria are correctly being picked up, but the background, a lot of background pixels are misclassified or mislabeled as mitochondria. Now, when I thought about it, it, uh, it did make sense. Mitochondria is doing a great job, but in this case, the complexity is not just within these objects, not just within mitochondria in this case, the complexity is also in the background. Look how busy the background is and how the background could easily be misinterpreted as mitochondria if you don't have uh, enough training. So I went back and I labeled more. So let's get back to this image and I labeled a lot more when it comes to the background. So the only thing I have done is I just took my uh, rectangle tool and I selected this entire image as this background and there you go. So this is how I defined background and I did that for all of my 12 images. So now I'm providing more training information uh, on the background where the real complexity lies in this specific image. Remember that annotation is an iterative process. You may think that you got it right the first time, but once you look at the results, things start to make sense. So you go back and correct whatever mistakes we have done in our initial annotations. So this is, uh, uh, this is the mistake I have corrected here, and the results look spectacular as you can see here. This is, not, this is an actual segmentation result using only the 12 training images. Of course, these are the same training images. Now I can use the same model to segment more images that look very similar to what you are seeing on the screen. So let's go through a couple of these images to see how good the segmentation is. As you can see, they're very well segmented uh, against a very busy background. So lesson number one, make sure you're annotating enough regions where the complexity is coming from. In this example, it's the background. So now let's switch to this multi-class example. Unfortunately, that's, that's not a bio example, but still you can, uh, you can ex extrapolate the lessons that we learned from this non-bio example to a bio example. So let's get back to our annotate page where we have all of our data sets listed and let's pick the sandstone that helps us understand the multi-class se uh, semantic segmentation case. So let's click on annotate. This opens this up uh, in a new browser. And here is the data set. In case you're curious about this, uh, this is a X-ray microscope scan or a volume that's scanned on X-ray microscope of a sandstone. And bulk of what you see here is quartz in gray and the dark regions are pores in between the quartz grains and the bright region is a heavy mineral. In this case, uh, I believe this is pyrite. And what I'm most interested in is segmenting these regions that have some texture to it, but they have very close mean gray level to the uh, quartz. So oftentimes these can be misclassified as quartz and sometimes quartz can be misclassified as these regions and that depends on how we annotate. And let's learn these lessons from, uh, from this exercise. Now, I have 50 such images in this data set, and it is completely not practical for us to label every pixel for every one of these four classes. It's not even a good use of our time in doing that because if you look at the quartz, it looks the same up here, it looks the same here, it looks the same here, and if I go to image number 10, for example, it looks very similar, and if I go to image number 50, it looks very similar, so it really does not make sense for us to label every pixel for quartz in every one of our images. Now. Along the same lines, if you look at my clay, it looks the same here. It looks the same right there. Of course, it looks very similar, but the problem is I don't have a lot of it. So my strategy here is to label quartz, all of these four classes, in a few of these images, but then in all of my images, I would like to label the quartz uh, wherever, it, uh, sorry, the clay is wherever they are because I don't have much of it. So that's the strategy and that's exactly how I started to label. As you can see, my image number one, I paid uh, a bit more attention in labeling quartz, in labeling the bright region, in labeling my uh, clays, and also the dark maroon color right there, uh, which represents the pore space. So I did that on my image number one, image number two, and so on. But when it comes to some random image, let's go to image number 13, for example, I just focused on labeling the minority class that's tough to segment, which is the clay in this case. 
So I did this and I trained it by hitting the train uh, right there. And after training, the results were not great. And you can see the results right there. And as you can see in my image number one, let's go back to my image number one and remove the labels so you can compare those. You can see that a bulk of this image is classified as green, which is clay. That's absolutely wrong because most of this is quartz right there. So I have to do something to my labels because my quartz is being confused for clays. So I went back to my labels. Now that I know exactly what the problem is, I wanted to define more regions for quartz, but not at random locations, but not at just going to image number 10 and then just drawing quartz somewhere over there. I wanted to provide a bit more context because that is important. Where we are failing here is in, uh, of course, segmenting the pixels that correspond to quartz, but also more importantly, the segmenting the pixels that are borders between quartz and clay. So what if I can provide more context from uh, by defining the border area? So that's exactly what I have done. So if I go to image number 10, if you look at my clay right there, I added quartz that is right next to clay, a few of these pixels. I'm not adding a lot of it, a few of these pixels right next to clay and also added a little bit of pore space right there. So as you can see, wherever I have pores, I define some quartz. Wherever I have uh, my clay, I define some quartz. So I focused a bit more on defining the interface or the border between these classes by putting them right next to each other. So it provides additional context to my training algorithm. This only took additional half an hour, that's it, by, uh, to provide this additional labels. And the results were pretty amazing, as you can see right there much better than what I had initially. Again, this annotation is a repetitive process. Keep annotating until you are satisfied with this. It's not just a visual process. We also give you the uh, quantitative results like during the training process. What is the intersection over union? What is the accuracy as the training is going by? So you can actually look at the values and make a decision, but visually we always, uh, we, uh, it, it's very satisfact uh, satisfactory to look at visual results. So here it is, and here is the original image, and uh, let's go back to our image number one so you can and remove the overlay so you can clearly see exactly how much better these results are. Uh, let me bring this to similar scale so it's easier. And compared to the where I started off. And between this and this result, it was only additional 30 minutes of annotations but then the initial annotation provided me information about where I was failing, so I went back and fixed that. So I hope you found this process to be intuitive, this process to be much more efficient compared to labeling every pixel in every one of these images, which is not even practical in data sets like these. So please go ahead and sign up for a peer.com, go ahead and upload your data sets, annotate them, partial annotate them by not wasting a lot of your time. And I don't want to give you the impression that you can just annotate this in a very sparse way, like take only 10 minutes or 20 minutes and you get amazing results. After all, these are deep learning algorithms. The more data, the better it is. So instead of spending an hour segmenting every pixel in a given image, you're spending the same hour by dividing these uh, your annotations into 10 different images. So this is a much better strategy than just uh, uh, annotating every single pixel. So once you're done with your annotations, go, go ahead and hit the train button and let appear take care of the training process, of the hyperparameter tuning process, and all of that, uh, uh, that, that behind the scenes stuff that you don't have to worry about. So please go to appear.com, sign up, and uh, start segmenting. Thank you.